Good morning, good day, and good evening. I'm the Hotfoot, and this is Banished. Now, I've actually had this game sitting in my Steam list for quite a long time now, and I have been meaning to actually do some recording of it and play it for a bit. I have gone in and played a bit of the tutorials, but I'm going to have to go in and do a refresher course, and I thought, well, what better off for the first video than to jump in and do the tutorials again? So, let's do a bit of that. Um... Oh. <laughs> I forgotten how many tutorials there are all right so let's let's go into getting started learn the basics of the game including camera movement construction basic buildings assigning workers the jobs and starting a new town so what a better place to start than the start so let's do that hit OK and let's go now this game does run fine on the laptop so there's no reason I couldn't have done it earlier I had just completely forgotten that the game is in my list because I've got a good 200 or so games in my Steam list. Welcome to Banished! In this game, you control a group of exiled travellers who decide to restart their lives in a new land. You'll have to help them to s you'll have to help them survive. Press the next button to continue. Um, so just a quick little background, what this game basically is, it's, it's, a, it's a settlement building game. And I love these kind of games, like I loved the, uh, the Settler series, which is what this sort of reminds me of to a small degree it, it, from what I see in the videos and from what I did on the first time I did the tutorial which I did only this tutorial the started one um, yeah it just reminds me a lot of settlers and all that sort of stuff so it's sort of that uh, you know SimCity all those kind of things I love these kind of things town building settlement buildings uh, settlement building and so on simulations all right um at any time during this tutorial, you can access the options menu by pressing the exit button or escape. Okay, well, the menu has uh, uh, changed settings, exit the game. Alright, so, yep, that's fine. Go back to resume. Yep, uh, excellent. Same as in the other game. So, okay, this is sort of, to me, this is a case of where this tutorial, I think, so mm. far, it's probably too thorough. It's kind of obvious that I could click this, it says options when I hover over it, and then I could press escape. Camera movements, on the other hand, it's good to be told what they are, but as you've probably seen in other things like Battletech Beta, where there is no tutorial, there's no help at all or anything on how to play the game, well there is, there's a manual that the game comes with, but I've never read a single thing of it, sorry, not a physical manual, but a... A PDF manual or Word document I can't remember but I've never even I haven't even looked at it <laughs> I probably should I might find out a few things and how to do things in the game but yeah stuff like this I can generally work this out pretty quick myself but there's one person commented on the uh, Baltic beta video the first one well the only one that's up at the moment really now I think about it yeah I haven't done the others I did a live stream a test live stream with it but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so with that one, someone commented saying, oh, you know, I managed to figure out the camera controls, and, and like I said, that's just because it's who I am. It, these are the games I play, these sort of games, and camera controls are generally all very, you know, based down across the more. And this too, rotating the view. Um, did you actually realise this is the... <laughs> again, ba going back to Battletech Beta, this is how you rotate the view in Battletech Beta. I found this out while I was doing my little test live stream. I could rotate the camera, I was like, oh shit, I can rotate the camera. In case you're wondering, uh, the live stream was over on Twitch. It was just a test, just a trying out the equipment, just to make sure things are working. I don't have a little, I don't have this little thing going up in the corner just yet. I will get one put in there sometime, and I think um, I'll probably look at doing some live streams of belt of, ba of the BattleTech beta and just whatever else I feel like it. Uh, live streams, there's going to be no schedule at all to it. It's literally just going to be when I feel like doing a live stream. If people request me to do a live stream, then fine, I'll do one. But again, no schedules or anything on that at the moment. I would love to expand this channel to the point that that is something that I could throw in on, you know, maybe a weekly basis. Once a week, go off and do a live stream. Uh, you can zoom the camera in and out by pressing insert and delete. Okay. Doesn't. Oh, okay. I was going to say it doesn't zoom in much. That's because it's zoomed in almost as far as it goes. It zooms out quite a bit. Oh man, this is absolutely amazing, I just have to say. Just all this landscape. this The look of this game is amazing. And look at that, look, I've already worked yet. Yeah, use the mouse. Oh, it says right there. Scrolling the mouse will also zoom the camera. Alright, yep, cool. Just, yeah, very basics, learning the controls. Uh, you can change the pitch of the camera by pressing page up and page down. Okay, yep, that's cool. That's as far down as it goes. 
No, it's what is that? That's close to 90 degrees, maybe thereabouts, something like that. Let's page up to go that way. Okay, cool. Is there another way I can do that? Nope. Normal button presses don't work in that sense, but this does. Hold the middle bus button and moving around like that. And there appears to be no scrolling action with the mouse unless you move to the edge of the screen, but. Because, uh, for recording purposes, I play in a windowed mode whenever I can, because I'd like to be able to monitor my recording. Um, I do eventually want to have a second computer set up solely for recording, and that way I don't have to do window mode on all my games. It'll just be full desktop, and I'll have a capture card on the other computer with the this one running through that. Um, Alright, so what was it? That was page up and page down for those. All the keyboard for mod 5, blah, blah, blah. Yep, that's nice. Now that you're familiar with the moving controls, it's time to start playing. Woo! Start playing. Sorry for your eardrums there. Uh, the people you control need three things to survive. Shelter, food, and a way to keep warm in the winter. Isn't that the whole point of shelter? Shelter is to keep you warm and safe. Um, aren't you just sort of saying shelter, food, and shelter? I could be wrong. Maybe they're talking about blankets. Maybe they need blankets. People do need blankets. I could use a blanket. It's getting a bit cold at the moment. Winter's setting in. I love it! Winter's awesome. You might notice that some people have icons floating above their heads. This means townsfolk don't have a place to live. Uh, you can provide the townsfolk with a place to live, build homes for them. First, select the housing menu on the toolbar. Right, click that, click that, and we're going to put a house right here. Uh, using the mouse and the highlight area, press the uh, bounce button. Okay, yep. Place the building will leave a footprint where it will be built to get the town's back to start construction. You'll have to collect wood for the structure and stone for the foundation. Uh, you can cut down trees and remove rocks in the landscape by using the destruction tool. Start by pressing this one. Then we'll click this one and we're going to drag a box over here. So as you can see, yes, I have done the tutorial before. A lot of it's coming back to me. I'm really remembering it. So we're probably going to be able to fly through this pretty well. Um, area to start removing rocks. Uh, sorry. The townsfolk will head to that area and start removing rocks and trees. While they are busy, you can place a stockpile where the citizens will store logs, stone, iron, and firewood. Select the storage tools by pressing this one, and then we hit this one, and this will create a stockpile right there. So that's just basically an area. They're going to gather their resources and they're going to pile them up there. If anything, this tutorial could probably serve for anyone out there who hasn't gotten or played this game yet, and just wants to watch someone else do it as opposed to learning themselves, you know. Some people learn that way, some don't. I learn by doing, but I can also learn by watching. I sort of a bit of one way or the other. That sounds a little bit voyeuristic to me in a moment, for a moment in my head. Get your minds out of the gutter. I should get my mind out of the gutter. I can't talk. The townsville... Um, sorry. The townsfolk will move the harvested rocks and trees to the stockpile. Once there, once there are materials in the stockpile, the people will move logs and stone to construction locations. Sorry, I'm not reading great. I don't have my glasses on at the moment. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, the reason why I have to wear glasses is it's actually just one eye. Um, I think I've mentioned this in previous videos, that I only wear glasses because one of my eyes doesn't see properly. The other one sees near perfectly. A bloody nuisance. I literally see two images everywhere I look. It makes depth for... for depth perception hard to obtain, but I can do it with a bit of, with a bit of effort. Or if I'm wearing my glasses. Uh, select next. Select professions by wait, what are we doing again? Tools and reports. Uh, assign jobs. Okay, we're assigning jobs. Um, try to assign two builders by pressing the up arrow key next to the profession. Right, so we're pro assigning professions. We need people to go and do shit. So we need builders. We've got to assign them. Uh, the builders can now begin construction on the house, as you can see. Just one house isn't enough, you'll need three more houses to give the other families a place to live. Once again, click the house tool by pressing this and then we're hitting this one. Uh, using the mouse, move the house to the highlighted area and press the left mouse button. You may need to rotate the house to get it into place, so that's R and T. So I'm guessing, yep, that way and that way, yeah, so that's... Right R to rotate either if you want to say to the left or to the right. But in this case, R, what was that? It's rotating to the right actually, but R to rotate clockwise, T to curve, rotate counterclockwise. 
Right, uh, just a blah 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 thing thing something something something. I'm just gonna click there and then we're gonna rotate. Oh, went past this one there, pop that there, and one more there. So, yeah. Uh, sometimes it takes a while for people to do all the jobs that you have assigned. If you're in a hurry, you can change the speed the game runs at. Start by pressing this or the F1 key. I'm gonna press the F1 key this time. Uh, this, but this is the button down here that we press, but I just decided to go for the F1 key. Uh, speed the simulation up. So, you can go, what is it, one, two, three, four? Two. I have no idea what that one is. So that's two. What's that one? Doesn't tell me. What's that one? Crash the simulation. Okay, let's just speed that one. Two. Let's see. One, two. Try getting used to modifying the game speed. You can slow down, pause, resume, and speed the up. That's what the house is built into a tutorial. So it's basically one, two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three, and four. Controls and that's the current speed. So speed it up a bit more. Pause it. Play. Okay. Cool. That's really simple. Then. That's easy. You've got that there. You can tell what you're pressing. Although I, I keep on to think this is four and then that's five. But in my mind, I'm correcting, saying ignore that. Look at that one. What's that little cute deer doing there? He's having a bite of that grass. He is. Look at him. Look at the little cutie. Let's slow that down. Look at that. That's so cute. There's two of them over here. Look like they're f***ing. Bleep. There's two of them over here that look like they're making love. Let's put it that way. Stop that. Yeah, those are two male deers, aren't they? I'm not judging. I do not judge. Uh, yeah, let's speed that back up, actually. Alright. Great. You've built houses for all the townsfolk. It may... S that may have seemed like a lot of work for a few hours, but now you know how to build anything. Uh, to build any structure, place a building footprint. The citizens will clear the area and then collect through the resources. And then collect enough resources to build the structure as long as there are citizens assigned as builders. They'll take care of the rest. Uh, people are going to need food, otherwise they'll starve. Starve. Uh, they can acquire food in a variety of ways. They can hunt, gather, and fish, plant crops, grow orchids, or raise livestock. If the people are close to starving to death, the hunger icon will above part their, part their head, so like, these people are about to die. Uh, since this town is near a river, the easiest way to quickly generate food is build a fishing dock, select food processing from the toolbar by pressing that button, or what was it, F7. Uh, fishing dock, now select the fishing dock by pressing 4, or that button again. And we're going to place that over here. We need to rotate. So, R. Uh, and pop that right there. Uh, most builders produce food or other resources require workers. You can assign fishermen in the same way you assign builders. Okay. That one, that one, and how many do we want? Assign four fishermen. Two, three, four. Right. What's that? Laborers. So, laborers are basically everyone else. This really is just like Settlers, the Settlers series of games. In fact, this is probably more like, I think, Settlers 3 and 4. Although I think you could probably do this in 2 as well. All as well I remember is 1 and 2 were very simple. You build a building, if there's a spare settler, he went and occupied it. But I believe in 3 and 4 you had to build the tools for them. And you had to assign a number of settlers to do the task as well. Um, you may notice this icon above some citizen sets. This means that the workers you just assigned don't have a place to work. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four. Yep. <coughs> you just assigned don't have a place to work. As soon as the fishing dock is complete, is anyone even? There's nobody working on it at the moment. It looks like they'll start working there, and the icon is here. Okay. Close the window, pressing the X button. Yep. Okay, and while we wait, we're going to speed it back up again, so I'm going to press F1, and I'm going to hit 4 a couple of times to speed things up. So, apparently it's cold, I think, that's what that means. But they're getting a little bit chilly on the welly. Okay. Uh, roads and... Oh, shit, I really need to read things. Okay, so, basically we're building roads for some reason. Uh, stone roads provide faster travel, but require a large amount of stone to be built. Uh, there, and can I just turn and go there? I'm guessing that seemed to have worked. Uh, the same builders that construct buildings will prepare the road for use. After they perform construction, the townsfolk will move faster when traveling on roads. 
Okay, so the roads basically speed up the travel of all the workers and such, so people can move around a lot quicker. Okay. I really do have a bad habit sometimes of clicking forward and not reading things, which is when I love it when you've got a tutorial that has a back button. This one, however, does not. As the town grows and workers produce food and other resources from many locations, it's useful to see an overview what the town has available. This image can be found using the overview tool. It can be found in the tools menu, open it by pressing F2 or pressing that button there. Right, uh, general statistics, uh, need to read things. In the overview, you can see the amount of stored construction materials, food, firewood, clothing and tools. You can also see current population, average health, hearts, and happiness stars as well as the current weather I don't know why suddenly my accent decided to go American just then that's not how we pronounce things in this country average health hearts 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 that's how you pronounce it in this country hearts that's how you pronounce it if you're from the outback or you're a bogan don't judge me and stars stars that's how you pronounce that one stars Ah, we do love to stretch out our R's here in Australia. We really do. Like, so that's why it's hearts, it's hearts, and stars. Because we do stretch them out. We do. We really do. I'm not bullshit. That is how Australians talk. We don't always talk like Steve Irwin, though. Which is pretty much what I'm sort of doing here. Is We don't always talk like Steve Irwin, Crocodile Hunter. We don't always talk like Russell Coit and... Uh, we don't always talk like Russell Crowe, who is a New Zealander, not an Australian, but he's close enough to being Australian as it is anyway. We do talk about that. What's this Fahrenheit bullshit? How do we change that? Sorry, but we're not moving on. Show in Celsius. Thank you very much. That's better. Water freezes at zero and boils at a hundred. Well, actually, it doesn't really boil at a hundred. What is it? I can't remember. There's something else, but... Water freezes at zero. Not at whatever bloody hell Fahrenheit says. That's... Sorry, guys, but that's a stupid system. If it's 40 degrees outside, it's bloody hot. If it's 45, yeah, you maybe not be going to work if you work outside. If it's over 50... Stay home. Put the aircon on. Hop into the kiddie pool in the living room with the aircon on. If it's 26 or 25, it's beautiful. It's a lovely day outside. In the overview, if you can. Oh, yeah, we already read all that. So, what have we got? 31 stored logs, 25 stone, and 9 tools. No specifics on the tools? Okay. Uh, four clothes. So, what? Everyone's naked? Unless they've got some clothes? Man, I stole food. Five. Uh, first spells can't remember. Okay, yeah. We already read that, so moving on. When food and other consumable goods are produced, they need to be stored somewhere. Until now, the people have been placing everything in the cart that they arrived with. That's this one here. Uh, excuse me, a bit of a sniffles. As usual, when I start recording, I get the sniffles! Yeah. Placing everything in the cart they arrived with. You can place in a barn. So we're going to raise a barn now. Select barn by pressing that one. And uh, using the mouse, place it, and let's also do some rotating. Okay, so what? There's one way in, one way out. I take it. Till the green display under the storage barn matches the yellow. Yep, okay. Yep. Yes, it does match. Well, you're born in a barn. You're born in a barn. They say that in other countries around the world, but you're born in a barn. It's certainly one we definitely say here. You're born in a barn. <coughs> Jesus was born in a barn. Just, I'm not a religious person. That's just a joke. Oh, I remember hearing once upon a time. <coughs> oh, excuse me. If you look at the uh, overview tool, you can see there aren't enough logs to build the storage barn. You have to cut down more trees for construction to continue. Okay. If you say so. What's this? Reserve of stone is low, reserve of logs is low. Ooh. Uh, harvest tree by 
increase resource by pressing that. Okay, so you can harvest trees, remove resources, collect stone. Okay, so you can tell it to harvest a specific thing. Okay, that one I didn't remember. So we want to grab all them trees, all them trees over there. People also need a way to stay warm in the winter. The easiest way to do that is to cut logs into firewood. To do this, you'll need a place for a woodcutter to work. Start by... Um, what is it? Start, start by selection resource production. Start by selection resource production. That's not English. Start by selecting resource production. Thank you very much! Uh, use blah 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 blah. Now select the woodcutter by pressing that. Uh, using the mouse and the highlight there, press the yep, same as always. So we're gonna put him there. Honestly, I would have put you know over where the trees were. We've been better by foot. That's what you do in settlers. In fact, in settlers, three and four, you in fact all of them actually, you put down a tree cutter, and then near him you put I think one or two foresters. And what they do is they go out, they plant new trees. Well, the tree cutter goes out and cuts them down. So when the trees are mature enough, he comes out, he cuts them down, the forester comes out, he plants another tree. The reason why you put one or well, why you put two to every woodcutter is because I think uh, that the, tr the woodcutter will work twice as fast as the foresters. I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100 percent sure, but yeah. <clears throat> the townsfolk are in danger of freezing to death, which they have been for quite some time. This icon will appear above their heads. If they are overly cold, the people will return home or go to the closest warm building they can find. This icon will also appear above ho over homes that don't have any firewood available for heating. Okay. Uh, yep, alright, so let's speed it back up again. Ooh. What the hell are you? You good? That's good. He did. No. How are you all going? You know, go ahead and leave a comment. Are you enjoying this? Do you like this game? I do. I said this is one of my kind of games. Settlement building. I love it. It's awesome. It's kind of part of the reason, I suppose, why I like Civilization. Because I've never played it before, but now that I do play it, I sort of think, I actually do like this. It, the thing that put me off of it in the past was it was turn-based, and the, I used to never like turn-based strategy games. I hated them. But I think uh, things like Total War, Medieval Total War, probably paved the way for me to enjoy uh, turn-based strategy games. Because that's a bit of turn-based strategy mixed with real-time strategy. You, know, you do your battles in real-time, you do everything else in turn-based. Uh, you can always assign workers by using the professions tool. But you can also uh, change the number of workers when examining the details of a structure. Click on the woodcutter building to view the details. Ah, cool. Sign one woodcutter by pressing the up button. Oh, no, I should have read that before I did that. Damn it. A worker will now start producing firewood. He or she move logs from the stockpile to the building and cut them into firewood. The rest of the townsfolk will use firewood to heat their homes. Or some. They will just add the production at this location. Okay, cool. At least everything comes with labels. Labels are always good. What's this? Toggle ping this window so that it stays open and doesn't track the selection. So if I put it there... No? Oh, no. Close my window! Bastard! Now that the storage barn is built, the cart that the people arrived with is no longer needed. You can remove it and anything else you build using the destruction tool. Oh, excuse me. Uh, remove structures. Right. And we want to remove that. Remove that. What is that? A deer? No, that's a person. I thought that was a deer standing there. Susie, get out of there! Jeez, love. Um, yep, and speed it up again. With some maintenance and a little luck, a small town like this will survive for many years. The children will grow up, become workers, and have children of their own. New houses can be built, and the town can continue to expand. Well, we're going into the winter. You know what that means? Making babies time! You think about it. Seriously, think about it. 
If at any point you need help with something in the game, or a description of how building or tool works, you can refer to the in-game help. Uh -huh. Okay, yep. You can read some of the help reference, uh, or press next to play the next tutorial. It focuses on resource production and survival. Press quit to return to the main menu. Well, let's have a look. How long have we been recording for? We've been recording for 25 minutes. So, I'm going to go ahead and quit here. I'm going to hit that one. Because we'll pick up the next tutorial on the next video. So, that's at least four videos we're getting out of the tutorial. And if, we're, if I'm happy enough with all that, and if you guys are happy enough with it, we will move on to the actual game. Which, I'm pretty sure if I just hit new. Yeah, we're just literally creating a settlement. That's all it is. So, yeah. Well, anyway, I'll call that for banished. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit that like button down below. And leave a comment. Also, if you haven't already, hit subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Peace!